last trailer video. We could go on for days and days, but I just have this one more little topic that I want to address. And to be real honest with you, this topic is something that I also talk about when I teach an instrumental arranging class to college music education and music therapy majors at UMKC. And what I'm talking about is how do we connect this section of music to this section of music? In the case of logic, we've got all sorts of tools and tricks. In the case of writing music for actual human musicians, well, we need to, to do some other things. Now, I'm gonna show you two techniques that are key here in logic. And number one is like my top five favorite things to do ever. And I'm kind of embarrassed by it because it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of a silly thing to do but I'm gonna show you how to make a reverse cymbal sound and then we're gonna add a couple of those trailer effects and I'm gonna show you how to pop them right to the music. So first things first, let's make a reverse cymbal sound. Now you've probably heard this and if not, you know, stay along for the ride, it's not that difficult. I'm gonna close out of the library and the inspector and stuff to show you how we get there. I'm gonna make a new software instrument track. I'm gonna open the library and then from here, orchestral, percussion, orchestral kit. Now I know from experience, I'm going to click solo, I know from experience exactly which note is the crash symbol that I'm looking for. The note that I'm looking for is right here on the keyboard. I'm going to click this. That's just a nice crash symbol. I'm going to close out of this keyboard because what I want to do is I want to hit that note on my MIDI keyboard mm, about as loud as I can. I don't need the metronome for this, so I'm going to go ahead and click it off. I'm going to hit R to record. This is unrelated to anything else in the music. Are you ready for the symbol? Wait for it. Three, two, one. I'm going to hold the symbol down or hold that key down until the resonance of the symbol completely decays. I'm going to lift it up. Control B bounces that in place. We've done that before. I'm going to call it symbol. Now I'm going to actually delete this track because I've got this file to work with here. Double click it and then click on the file editor. Select the whole operation. Command A. Under functions, choose reverse. Now it's very important that we start from a file that we know we can reverse without wrecking other files in our directory. This particular editor in Logic is what's called a destructive editor, meaning it takes the original file and it does what you tell it to do. So in this case, it's going to reverse the file. So I just made this brand new symbol. I just made this brand new symbol hit. Now I can reverse it. Reverse. Well, what happened? The whole thing flipped around backwards, and now I've got this awesome little slide up at the end. So let's check that out. Ready? Whoops, I need to solo that. Sorry. Let's see. Solo that. W gets me back to that waveform editor. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to close down the mixer, and I want to stretch this region out just a little bit. It tends to get trimmed off. Now, check this out. This is the next most important thing I'm going to show you. Way down here on the bottom of this waveform editor, so in the file editor, also called the waveform editor, is a little gizmo called the anchor. It's literally an anchor. Is it the most annoying looking thing in the Logic Pro 10 interface? Possibly. I'm going to click and drag it. By the way, I could I could zoom out just a little bit. That would help my plight. I'm going to click and drag it. Now I'm going to zoom in, get out there to the end of this thing. And you see what we're doing? I'm finding the moment where this thing pops right here, and I'm moving the anchor to that part of the file. So now what's going to happen when I close out of that waveform editor with W and I take Control Option to zoom into this, I see a little tick mark right there. That's telling me that's the snapping point on this file. 
control option click takes my zoom level back and I'm going to take it back until that clicks right on the downbeat. So I'm going to zoom in there and I'm going to click it right to the downbeat. And you see the anchor is actually creating this line that goes up right there. Click it into the downbeat. See it's lined up to the anchor. Now control option bounces me back out again. So that's how I'm going to get from one area of the music to another. It's going to act like a little bit of sonic glue. I'm going to add a couple more sound effects doing the exact same thing and we'll see how that sounds. So basic sound effects. That reverse symbol starts to sneak in. Okay, now I'm going to add a couple of those sound effects. We'll pop back in here and check it out real quick. But I wanted to show you how to make an anchor and then how to take that wave file that you bounced and turn it into a reversed symbol file. I've given you a whole folder of trailer sound effects, which you can find on the Schoology project link. I grabbed a couple of those trailer sound effects because I'm trying to layer things together. I drug them into my logic project. I opened the files in the waveform editor. I repositioned the anchor at that hit point of the trailer transition sound effect. I put them together with my reverse symbol in a track stack, right click, track stack. That creates a summing stack, which I could use to adjust the level, bring it up, bring it down. If I go into my mixer, I see that my track stack has its own bus, bus six, and I added a similar reverb to this that I had added on some of the other tracks. So now I've got a little bit of reverb. Let's hear how these two things connect together. All right, that's a very basic start to something that I can get on board with. I'm going to put some more layers in the beginning, and then I'm going to put a little bit more to this beat that kicks in at the fast tempo. But I've got some things happening, and I wanted to show you how to make that reverse symbol and how to reposition the anchor point.